Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Action Goose here, and today I'm bringing you a video on the best controller settings you can have with your PC set up for Vanguard. So first on the list, we're going to jump into graphics. We're going to go to gameplay, as you can see on the screen, and we're going to go from quality, and then we're going to go to display, and then we're going to finish off with controller settings. And these are all going to be for my controller, which is an Elite Series 2 controller, Xbox One. So if this is something similar, you're on Xbox One, probably are if you're playing on PC. Number one and most important thing probably that you need on your PC settings uh, in gameplay is your field of view. I run this at 120, especially for multiplayer, because it's not going to hurt my frames that much. And I get to see absolutely everything, and I can see anyone coming from my left and right. Now, number one thing you want to do on this is change your ads field of view from independent to affected as you can see when you're down in affected uh you are able to just stay at the same field of view you were before you even aim down sights as long as your scope is less than 3.25 x if it goes above that it's going to go straight into normal independent and what this does is it'll aim in uh, I think it naturally goes to 80 field of view which is normal for console players so you wouldn't really notice but for me as a PC player, that is very, very annoying and I'm not used to it. And you also get more visual recoil, so you're better off staying with affected as much as you can and you're better off staying with any scope below 3.25 X's. Quick settings here, turn these off. World motion blur, it's a waste of time. It's just going to uh, affect you when you're running and when you're shooting. And weapon motion blur, it's the exact same thing. Turn these off, you don't want them. And also turn on your low latency. Quality, this is a really, really big uh, sentence page that you need to get right for your frames to run correctly for your pc to be able to handle what you're actually trying to put out there uh, and for you to get the best possible reaction times in game so you can win a lot more battles and a lot more little fights in vanguard's multiplayer game so change your quality presets to, to custom you can go low ultra or whatever but uh customize it yourself it's better for your pc i presume your pc is custom customized yourself so you know what's best for it if you already this far render re resolution always put this to 100 but if you're really struggling and it can't somehow comprehend everything you can turn it down uh, but your 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 quality is going to go down a lot so 100 will leave it at the refresh rate or the rate of which your monitor is able to handle mine would be 1080p um dynamic resolution turn this off this is going to match your PC's refresh rate. So mine will be 244 hertz. Uh, I don't need it to be that. I just need it to be 180, 180, 180 or 190 frames per second. So I don't need this. I turn it off because it's uh, messing up with my monitor. So texture resolution. I actually put this to low. If you want a really, really, really nice and uh, lovely graphics, because the game actually is fairly nice this year for graphics, put it to high, but it's going to kill your RAM usage. Uh, medium is fine. It's a good in-between. If your PC can handle it, I recommend this. And if you're really struggling with stuff like that, go low. Very low is not going to be nice for you. It's going to be very disgusting to look at. Uh, everything's going to be grainy. Uh, low, I actually use low, and I have a really high-end PC. Medium to low, this is where I will go. There is very little difference here. I have tested both of them. I went with low for more frames. I just love frames. Texture filter, astrotropic, uh, up to you. I put it to medium. Uh, you can leave it on high or very low. Particle quality level, always put this to high. I realized this in uh, Warzone. Once these are high, uh, both of these, I put them to high. Uh, it tends to give you really good quality when you have your texture resolution low. So if you have this low and these high, it tends to make up for the uh, kind of quality of the gameplay when you're playing. It actually looks very nice for the low level of resolution you're playing with, which in turn gives you frames because this isn't very demanding on your frames. So it's a very, very good option. Bullet impacts, up to you, turn it off or not. Uh, uh, shader quality there's rumors that when you have it higher it actually is better for your frames so i tried it with high and it seemed to do the exact same thing with low so i'm leaving it on high and it seems to look nice so that's what i go with uh this distant level detail and nearby detail is a new kind of thing uh, i just left it as high i don't know if it's going to really affect too much of what you're uh, looking for screen space shadows actually good to turn this on uh, it's a nice little feature they've added in. It's different. It was there in Warzone, but it's not exactly the same. You should have caches, sun shadows, like your below and sunspots. Uh, this is kind of new. I realized that shadows, if you up put them on a lot, it tends to help a frame. So I've left a lot of my shadows on, left them a high. Uh, usually I would turn these off. So if you are really struggling with frames and, uh, and you really feel like your game is just it's a bit choppy and stuff, try turning them off or turning them down. Do a double test, two games, you'll know straight away. Uh, but I left them on as normal. Particle lighting, I would really suggest that you put this to ultra. Uh, your particle quality level, if you have that as high and if you have this as high, your particle lighting, both of them complement each other beautifully and everything looks very, very nice and smooth in game. Ambient occlusion, leave it on both. Uh, it keeps away the edges and stuff on your uh, structures and game in game kind of architecture and stuff like that. So you, it's good to have that on. I put my screen space and reflector on low, uh, my SSR. I, <laughs> Always kind of had it as low, didn't really 
mine too much it's left as that's always been a go-to for me i've done nothing with these i've turned all these off your post-processing effects uh, anti-aliasing i've always run filmic smwa t 2x this has always been my go-to uh because it is very low as it says on my vram and it also gives me a really nice cinematic look and everything looks very vivid and i actually enjoy this a lot depth of field turn this shit off this is terrible it makes everything blurry if you want to be better at the game don't have blur on blur just does not help and uh vram usage target it, it was an automatically set to 85 percent, so it's up to you if you want it okay moving on to display uh, not a big difference here, if anything. This is just display settings, and it depends on your monitor that you have right now. I run full screen borderless. 100% you should be running full screen all day for better frames. I have to multitask. I have two screens. You would imagine this uh, when I'm streaming or recording, so that's why it's on this. But I would recommend for anyone not on this, full screen will give you the best possible frames that you can possibly get. So go with that. Uh, make sure you have your display and your proper monitor selected. Uh, this will automatically set to your frames per your PC's monitor um v-sync i always turn these off don't need it uh frames now this could be a big thing for a lot of people so up to you you can customize this so that you run low frames in your menu and in your minimized frame that's up to you and then you can try max out with 250 i have done this in previous games and i've tried it it doesn't seem to work as efficiently as it should the best way to do this is probably preset your frames uh through your graphics card before you go into this uh, or just set it to unlimited now unlimited will just run it as best as possibly can in every scenario you are in with the game out of game in the game menu and before you get into menu this is definitely the best option for you to get the best possible frames i would definitely recommend this and if you haven't already you need to go to your bio settings and turn on your vram usage bio settings you'll see it if you can get into your bios and turn it on if you have not turned that on you're only getting maybe 50 percent or 70 percent of what your your uh, ram is basically offering you for gaming for the virtual ram that you need to run really really high level frames so if you need more like that look it up on youtube because i actually not going to go into that because i'm not detailed in them situations but that's what you need to do all the rest of these settings are up to you nothing crazy here i have turned not enough other than i added my display adapter to be my graphics card which is the 20 rtx super now so now you're on pc and you have a controller you need to figure out what your best settings are for on pc always have to remember you're running at a higher level frame than any other controller player would usually be playing with they usually run at maybe 80 to 100 frames sorry fps per second uh, or field of view per second and um, so you need to make sure you are able to handle everything quickly and for multiplayer i have bumped up my sensitivity to 1010 this has been working really really nicely for me i'm able to really snap on quickly i i'd usually drop this down for a bigger game to 8 8 uh, but 10 10 it seems to be good to me i always run a one dynamic so that means everything i shoot is the same speed as effect when i aim down sight it doesn't change you can turn this down sorry not for the ground of air fields it's for this one here you can turn this down to be slower when you aim down sight for anything um probably below 3.25 but if you really want to go into customizing your per zoom you can turn this on and really go in here so anything below i'd probably want to go one anything above i'd probably stay with one i'm very comfortable with this but if you feel like you're a sniper and you want to slow it down a bit or if you feel like uh, and you want to be a bit slower when you're in the ars usually you'd probably be lower than three you want to bring this down to like 90 95 if you really want to go for that but for me one is fine one is perfect i've played it one for the last few months now and i'm happy with that i go tactical on my buttons so that means i actually crouch or go prone with my r3 which would be quicker to me to go fully prone or just to crouch hop behind built things so i can always shoot people and head dip which is actually very very helpful i would definitely 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 recommend this if you haven't already everything else is standard except for my uh, aim response curve so i run dynamic and i've gone and done videos on this before and if you haven't seen them if you're new to my channel you'll see that i've done videos on this for warzone uh season two in specific and i didn't feel like there was a need for do anymore because i covered everything in that but the standard is your basic how fast your tome responds to moving the analog up and that's how fast your controller will respond to that uh, it's basically standard for everything if you turn that to linear it's going to directly throw your aim exactly over very similar to a mouse keyboard player which is uh, very tough for us to handle as controller players because we don't have as much ability we they get their full wrist their hand their shoulder to control everything really precise we just have our thumb so uh don't put linear on unless you're a freak uh but i don't think you'll be very good with that i run personally dynamic which is kind of a good in between so i like the quick response but not so quick that i can't control it and i found dynamic being very very helpful for me in a lot of scenarios and if you're a good pushy player and you like running at people that can be helpful but standard is just as good uh, it depends on the player and it depends which you are more comfortable with so test boat out if you want 
I would recommend standard or dynamic. I wouldn't recommend linear. Turn vibration off unless you really want to be immersive, but if it annoys me, it puts me off. Now we have a few new settings uh, to that I have not actually seen before. And this is an advanced controls under controller settings. And these are the likes of ADS sensitivity, transition timing. I turn, this is definitely instant. I want this to be instant. When I when I go to aim down, my sensitivity multiplier needs to be instant straight away. I don't want it to just come in eventually. I want it to be there, done properly. That's it, bang, finish. Uh, I run this up one again. Uh, so that's how I run mine. But if you want to turn it down for more uh, accuracy, that's up to you. As long as this is with your controller, I can't actually tell you what you need here. You need to go in game, pause it, move your controller a bit. And if it continues to drift or even uh, in a map or something, that tends to be good. You can actually see the pin on the map and it drifts. Uh, then turn it down or turn it up depends on which way it's going uh, but you need to do it yourself i cannot actually tell you exactly what you need but i run mine 13 13 8 8 and it seems to work perfectly and it does not drift when i'm aiming at someone little aim down sight crosshairs whatever it is will actually just start to drift and if you've ever noticed that that is this setting right here you need to fix that and if it's not being fixed with that get a new goddamn controller it's probably your thumb uh chum stick that's that's banjaxed so now last but not least is your gameplay controller settings so everything has like another extra bit but this is it so yeah so anyway uh target aim assist don't turn it off clearly you want it you're a controller player you need it so uh leave it on uh target aim assist mode i see the usuals there you know your default your precision your focus is see black ops is there alternate slow down when aiming near target um if you're if you like the black ops cold war aim down assist uh mode then go for this honestly do if you think that's a better aim assist than this but i have played this and aim assist is fairly strong in this as well so i use the default which is obviously for this one or call of duty warzone as it mentions so i, I like that aim assist and i'm used to it so when you become used to stuff in these games that's when you become good at the game because you know how to react to certain triggers and uh, recoils and stuff like that once again leave leave this on for aim assist uh, this is just how you melee so it's ads and b uh, you can change this to whatever you want double tap something you know it, it mounts up so that's really that that's all that that is nothing crazy uh blind fire is on if you need it you can shoot behind kings without actually looking uh, a few movement settings i think that actually be beneficial to a lot of players uh i don't know if you're going to need them right now in multiplayer but i always have automatic tackle sprint on uh, it's just been going like this since uh, warzone so if you feel like this is something you would like to throw on Put this on, it, it, it will make you quicker and it, you'll just be constantly running, which is great. Uh, don't, I found that with multiplayer, turn off auto move forward though, because this is actually really annoying. You might be standing there and you're just constantly running into whatever's in front of you. That's fine when you're in a war zone because you can just, you, you're getting used to stuff and you can, you're always like to move. And even when I'm shooting people, I'm moving. I'm never stationary. So uh, this is a thing you probably want to turn off for this, to be honest. Uh, I have the sprint cancels my reload. Turn this off. This is not a good idea. Uh, I don't know why that's on. Uh, you probably want to be able to sprint and reload at the same time. It's obviously very, very, very helpful when you're running. Imagine running and you're like, I need to get out of here, but you also need to reload and then you don't reload. You're running someone else and you're not reloaded and you get killed. Uh, turn this off so that you can reload and be constantly moving. Uh, very, very hard to stop you then because you're just moving, reloading. Sprint and bash door, turn this on. Really would recommend this. The doors can be awkward to open in multiplayer. It's really good if you can just run straight through them. Uh, tap the slide. Do not hold the slide. This is going to break your fingers if you don't. Um, a lot of people are going to be slide cancelling this game. I don't think it actually benefits you at all in multiplayer. Uh, maybe when the new Warzone uh, map, specific uh, Warzone, whatever it's called, drops. And yeah, but uh, right now I'm slide cancelling, but that's just because it's natural and habit. Uh, I actually don't feel like it's giving me any benefit running. Uh, so, but leave tap on just so you're ready for if Warzone does drop. After that, guys, that's everything really there. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hit a like on the video, hit subscribe button if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next one. See ya.